Okay, it's around the middle of August. Here we are at Mountain Gardens. We're kind of on the edge of a shady area, which is what these angelicas like. So we're here to talk about this plant right here, Angelica pubescens. But I might mention that we're surrounded by interesting, useful plants. There's a lot of emu tsao here. This one is uh, Luetzia carthamoides, also known as Raponticum. That's a fairly new uh, adaptogen from Central Asia. We'll talk a separate video on that. This is some very nice uh, Korean giant mint. That's the anise flavored one for treating food stagnation. So, multiple useful herbs surrounding me. At my back here is a giant thornless blackberry. So this plant here, Angelica pubescens, one of the two really giant medicinal angelicas that we grow. And we'll shortly do a video on the other one by Jur. This one is used for wind damp conditions, which in uh, English might translate to things like rheumatism. Uh, damn, wind damp, painful obstruction is called bee pain in Chinese, and it particularly relates to the lower extremities and lower back. Uh, and that's caused by dampness and wind. So this is a very drying herb. This is one of the, possibly the most powerful herb in that category. But you have to be a little bit careful if you don't have an issue with dampness, since this is very drying. It can injure what they say, injure the yin, which is the damp component of the body. Very easily grown, and in fact, it's weedy. We didn't plant these. We're gonna to have to be pretty careful about not letting it go to seed because it's naturalized itself all over the shady part of the garden here. And it's a huge, robust plant. The leaf is definitely pubescent, meaning uh, slightly fuzzy, hairy. Most of the angelicas are smooth-leaved, so here it is. It's doubly compound leaf, as most of the angelicas are, but this one's a little more fuzzy than any of the others, makes it easy to identify. Not quite as uh, finely dissected as a couple of the others. So it's a biennial, as are most of these uh, medicinal angelicas in any case. First year, it's just gonna make a rosette, uh, and that usually happens towards the end of the first summer that it starts growing. And then the second year uh, goes up and gets huge. So the best time to harvest it would probably be in the spring of the second year. When it's, the root's going to be about its maximum size. I can't think of anything very tricky about it. It's a huge plant, so obviously it likes to be well fed. The better you can feed it, uh, the more huge it's going to get. We've had these even bigger than this, 10 feet tall and 10 feet wide, if you give them the space and the... And the uh, fertility to do that and like I said after a year or two you might want to start deadheading it just to prevent it from uh, popping up all over your garden which is what it's doing here so that's Angelica pubescens do whoa uh, here's our jar here's a, it comes to market as uh, rather thick slices pretty strongly aromatic and it is specifically, uh, the description says, treats faint, painful obstruction in the lower body, dispels lurking wind in the kidney channel. Can also be used for uh, external invasion, for releasing the exterior, for wind cold conditions. And it's also used in certain kinds of uh, toothaches uh, with certain causes. Angelica pubescens.